Youngpreneurs Podcast, episode number 128, with your host, Victor Ahipeni. What's up, world? Another day, another podcast. I'm super stoked to have you here because we have an amazing guest on today by the name of Grant Cardone. Some of you may have heard of him, many of you may have heard of him, actually, and I really hope that you take the time to have a full listen to this once, maybe twice, even three times, because there is a ton of value. As you know, the show is targeted at the most successful under 30 five-year-olds in any industry, but I've made an exception today. Grant is, sits outside of that age bracket, but I'm sure you will see, if you haven't heard of him, why I allowed him to come onto the show and o- welcomed him with open arms. He's a best-selling author, I think uh, seven books now. Four of them have gone to the New York Times bestseller. He's an international speaker, CEO of four private companies. He's got real estate holdings in excess of $350 million, his own TV show, and the list goes on. He helps small companies with and all the way up to Fortune 500 companies grow their sales. Uh, and he, he explains it by saying that he helps them find overlooked opportunities and customizes their sales processes to become more efficient and he's you know this isn't just like your your uh, 7-eleven down the road he's worked with google sprint toyota gm ford and so many more and his books are absolutely awesome uh, i've re-listened to recently 10x uh, the 10x rule and that was absolutely amazing and if you're not first you're last they are game changers for your mindset going towards what can be achieved in business and in life so i'd highly recommend getting into those but he's also got a new book coming out called be obsessed or be average and this is a super cool book that you know from the, from how he explains it is going to have a huge amount of value to young entrepreneurs and he also put a offer out there for anyone who pre-orders it or gets it just after it's come out that you can uh, purchase through some certain links that we've got at passiveincomeyoung.com and it'll get you access to a 13-week training where he goes deep into each chapter of the book and you get him as your personal coach. So for me, somebody who owns their own private jet, multiple companies, teaches the best large companies around the world about their sales as well as runs his own businesses. It seems like an absolutely no-brainer. You get an amazing book and then you get training on top of it. So I would jump into there. It's, uh, yeah, as I say, it's absolutely no-brainer. I had so much fun on this interview. It's jam-packed, uh, full of action. And as I say, all the links that we mentioned will be in the show notes at PassiveIncomeYoung.com. And if you enjoy the show, make sure you leave a rating on uh, on iTunes and also reach out to Grant, uh, yes, tag, him, tag him in this post, share it with your friends. I really think that this needs to get out to as many people as we possibly can because as always, I want you to keep living life on your own terms. You're listening to the Youngpreneurs Podcast, the number one resource online for under 35 year olds where we chat twice a week to the most inspiring entrepreneurs in the world. We have it all. If you're looking for inspiration, guidance, or actionable tips to help you transition from that job into a business, or if you're ready to take that business to a whole new level, then this is the place to be. Get ready to live life on your own terms. Youngpreneurs, what is up? And welcome to another episode of the Youngpreneurs Podcast. As always, you're the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. And today, I just want to thank you for choosing to spend it with us. And today, you are in for an absolute treat because it's my honor to welcome to the show the man, the myth, the legend, Uncle G, aka Mr. Grant Cardone. Hey, Victor, thanks for having me, man. Thank you. It's my absolute pleasure to have you on, and I know you're about to help take everything to a 10x level. I know your time is precious, so folks, if you don't know about Grant's backstory, or even if you do, I highly recommend you go out and check his books, his training, his social media, where he puts out more posts in a week than most of you will in a lifetime. So I want to start diving in deep straight away. So Uncle G, I know a lot of top-level, high-performing entrepreneurs out there 
you know, they have this gripe with the current schooling system and the tertiary system. And, you know, a lot of these people are coming out, they haven't got jobs or they haven't got the skill set needed to thrive and survive in life. And a lot of these entrepreneurs say that the system is broken. However, they don't often have a solution for what would turn it around. So, what I want to put to you, if you had a, your 10x magic wand and you could turn schooling from something average to something that people would obsess about then and come out with those actual real life skills, what would that change look like? Look, here's the deal. You need to go to school with intention. What are you trying to grab? Why? I wasted 17 years going to school, Victor, because I didn't go there with intention. Like, like what can you suck out of the system that's going to be good for you? Because there's something there. It's not all bad, right? But it's all bad if you don't go with an intention. I think everybody would agree, look, there's, it takes too long to get out. Like, like if I could tell people to do one thing, do go get it done in half the time and get the hell out of there. Get out and go get into the marketplace where you can start making some bank, some wicked dough, baby, okay? We can start stacking paper because you're going to need money, man, no matter how educated you are. You could be the smartest man in the world. Look at Elon Musk. He says, I want money for one reason. I want to colonize Mars. So, so they're not going to teach him how to do that in college. Okay. He's got to make money in the marketplace. He's got to get seven billion people to exchange pennies with him so he can have enough dough to make traveling to Mars affordable to, to, you know, little, little peons like me and you. So getting out of the marketplace is great, like Elon Musk, and making bank is obviously awesome. But what about little old Jimmy, who's 18 years old, and he's about to make the biggest decision of his life, where he's meant to decide you know, what job or industry it is he's going to do for the next you know, 45 years before he retires. And yeah, he's made that decision that tertiary education isn't for him, he's not going to go down that path, but he feels kind of directionless. His family are telling him, he needs to go down that traditional path or follow the way that you know that traditional life plays out. You're talking you're always talking about busting out of obscurity, making your mark on the world, but whether this is a story that you know younger people were telling or I'm just I'm just making up, but yeah, a lot of them feel they haven't got the life experience or the knowledge to make that mark on the world yet. What advice would you give to these young future young guns that are gonna yeah, you know, be the the next inspiring people to so how would they approach it and overcome these naysayers and their own fears to thrive? Yeah, well, let, let, let me just take a, it's a great question, by the way. You do an awesome interview, man. OK, so so number one, I think they, they are not direction direction less and, and, and they don't have little references. I think they have massive references and maybe possibly wrong direction. OK, so think about your mom that said. I love you, little Victor. I love you, little Victor, just the way you are. You know, see, that's a direction, dude. That's that's your mom saying, don't change, man. Be just the way you are. I love you. Well, you might love me, mom, the way I am. I remember my mom telling me that when I was nine years old. I love you wait, just the way you She told me again when I was 10 and at 11 and at 12 and at 13 and at 25 and at 30. Dude, I didn't love me the way I was. And that's all that matters. So you guys out there, guys and gals. Look, you already have direction. You're looking around you. You see your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your friends, their parents. You see society. Look, man, you guys got to make a decision. Who are you going to be? Because they're wrong. They're wrong. They don't know what you want. They're wrong about what you want. You're the only one that knows what your dreams are. You're the only one that will decide how much you're willing to pay to make those dreams a reality. So, I've been told since I was a little kid, something was wrong with me. And I came from a great family. OK, it wasn't like my mom and dad were telling me directly, you're an idiot. You know, I, I came from a good family, good education. But the problem is the people that loved me the most didn't know what I wanted, dude. I wanted to be James Bond. I wanted to have the hot chick. I wanted to have the great marriage. I just didn't want to be the playboy. I wanted to have both. I wanted to be the, 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 you know, the guy that could walk into the club with the hot chick and have the kids because I've always wanted to have family. And I wanted the money, and I wanted the jet, dude, and I, I wanted all that. I wanted fame. And, and um, who, who knows that I want all that? Dude, that's, a, that's an inside deal, okay? That's my little freaking fantasy world I live in. The question is, and I think everybody's got those fantasies. See, most people are just not willing to say them because if you tell people you want to be rich, dude, they're going to knock you down. You know, I had a guy tell me yesterday, well, not everybody can be rich. Dude, I ain't talking about everybody, bro. I'm talking about me. Like, if everybody would just focus on their own freaking game, man, I, my, I want my game to be sick. 
I want wicked money. I want to be a great businessman. I want to be a mentor to others. I want my books to sell in the millions, okay? So the problem is if you start voicing that, okay, you're going to hear how much direction there is around you saying don't go there. And you're going to hear how many references there is. Just fit in. Just be average. And so that, that's why this book, Be Obsessed or Be Average, you got to get obsessed like, like you would be a drug or, or, or the wrong girl, you know, or that, whatever that freaking neurosis you got. All that neurosis, that freaking black, dark, crazy, evil stuff that you got going inside of you that you're embarrassed to tell anybody about, you need to tap into it. Because basically, that's an indication, man, that you haven't tapped into the other thing. And use that energy because that stuff is just coming out sideways because you're denying something, some genius inside of you. So that energy is great to have. But I think a lot of people, once they reach certain goals, they start being happy to live in mediocrity. That they're you know, living above above the median, uh, got enough money to have their house and pay their bills and, and do all of that. And that happens not only in the working world, but in entrepreneurs that I see you know, every day, we, we hit different goals and we just kind of stop or we slow down and we stop pushing forward and just you know, rest in that disgusting comfort zone that you know, is usually where we all start dying off. Where I, I see a lot of you know, people like you who I look look to and you know, Gary Vee and, and others who money is no longer a goal and you've smashed a lot of your other goals and you know, you keep pushing and pushing and there's a lot of people out there who say yeah why do you need more money and i know you know i i think of them as fun credits and it allows you to have more of a change in the world but how do you yourself you know with such success i mean let, let's Let's face it, you've got your own bloody private jet. You've got a net worth into the hundreds of millions. How do you keep driven and how would you suggest others, no matter, kind of, I guess, what phase they're at, to keep obsessed and keep driving towards goals and once they attain them, going to the next goals and so on and so forth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, look, dude, it's a great question. But, but look, like when I made my first $3,000, okay, when I went from making three grand a month to 6000 a month, it was like I bought a jet. <laughs> I was excited. I was as, as excited about that six. Th maybe not quite as excited, but I was freaking excited, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like I had never seen that much money in a month. I remember I'm like, oh my god, six grand. And my next thought was, dude, if I can double once, can I double twice? Now this is where people stop. They get happy with the six. Why? Because you got references. See, you got people around you saying seventy thousand dollars in a year. Your dad had never made more than 50. So your reference is what? See, that's what people say to me. They're like, dude, I, if I had a million dollars, Grant, I would retire. I'm like, bro, that's not even your goal. Okay. Your goal, you got lazy goals. And he's like, what do you mean? I said, you adopted someone else's targets. How do you know that? Because you just said a million dollars. You know, you, you have, you put no thought into it. There's no thought in your goal, right? You understand? So like, what do you really want? Okay. So like, as soon as I bought the jet, dude, man, I, every time I got in the jet, I literally, bro, I had a Woody every time I got in the jet. I'm like, damn, man. Okay. I love this, man. This is awesome, bro. I mean, I was the happiest, I, the happiest moments I've ever experienced in my life was the first couple of flights in that jet, you know? And then, and then I'm like, what else? But, but sooner or later that wears off and you're like, what am I capable of? You know, could, could I have two of these for the company and we could expand sooner or later? It's going to wear off. If you're, if you're just doing it for you, the watch, you know, every watch I ever bought, man, after three months, I'm like, okay, you know, whatever. What's next, man? Because the thing that really, like when you tap into this idea of being obsessed, it, being obsessed is not being satisfied, okay? It's how many different areas can I influence? How many different people can I inspire to have their own jet? That's a much bigger game to play, Right. I've written seven books. I've written, I've, I've created 19 best selling business and bo book programs. How can I help other people do that? So maybe we could change the school system so that when kids go to school, back to your first question, do they walk in and they see books like this on the shelf? Now, if you were in the seventh grade and you saw some guy sitting on the engine of his plane versus let's study history, which one are you going to grab, man? 
yeah, I definitely know which one I'd be chasing and, and looking to level up. I mean, if you're at, at school and you're trying to aspire to be somebody, you know, who owns a jet or who has a successful business or is a sporting icon or whatever it is, you're hanging out with the same people who aren't anywhere near that isn't probably going to get you to where you need to go. Well, it's definitely not going to get you to where you need to go. I mean, you need to keep chasing those people on a higher level than you yep. to be learning from them to fast track your progress yep. and to keep you accountable yep. I guess yeah yeah and, and then and then keep surrounding yourself with people at that level okay because those people at that level are not going to let you just be satisfied otherwise they're not going to make time for you they they, they want to play big games okay now I know in some of your past books you talk about finding a mentor and learning off them and obviously you're a pretty awesome example at that you've helped a lot of different people and you talk about going deep rather than wide so rather than searching for a lot of people and um you know reading 500 different books you'd rather read you know the 10 by one person and understand everything about their psyche when it comes to getting a mentor and i guess you can you can differentiate that if, if you think it's you know you need somebody in person or their books are going to be fine but when it comes to finding a mentor what kind of things would you be looking for and i guess how do you uh, make sure that they're the right person for you and that you're not going to outgrow them and things like that if you guys think you're going to get in that club with an email, hey, will you mentor me, Warren? You ain't getting in that. You're not getting in that club without money. These guys are never going to tell you that. You not getting there until you can help them get to another place. So the only way for me to get in that club is I got to help Elon colonize Mars, which means I need some money. Okay, I need to help him. A guy told me the other day, I'm done. And this is great for your audience to hear. I'm done making other people rich. I'm like, pal, if you're done making other people rich, you will never get rich. I think that's awesome. And it just shows that a lot of people out there that even if you're in a job, there's no excuse not to be able to find these mentors in the form of books. There's no excuse not to be able to go out there and be hustling outside of your nine to five uh, job, so you might start doing five to nine or you know, whatever it is. And yeah, I think that's really, really important when you're especially starting off, but any time is that, that hustle and that ability to try and 10x everything. Exactly. And, and, and all of you that got a problem with the job thing, if you got a problem with the job and you made a reference to this earlier, the nine to five or the five to nine, first of all, I don't even know what you mean when you say nine to five. I mean, I, I think I thought you said 95 hours. I'm like, okay, yeah, I got it. Because that's what it takes to be successful. If you think you're going to work a nine to five or do a four hour work week, it's all freaking bullshit. You ain't going to do it. It'll never happen. You can't work for your for for yourself from home by yourself and make fortunes and change the world. It doesn't happen. There's not one person that has ever done it. Um, and and if you got a problem with a job, how are you gonna start a company and have other people work for you in a job, right? Because if a job's a bad thing, the problem with that is you're not gonna be able to duplicate it and have two or three or four hundred people working for you that have jobs. So you need to change your mind about the job thing. Be great at your job and people will treat you great. So let's jump in. I want to know a bit more about your latest book. I have been re-listening to and deep diving into some of your I've been going I'll be going deep instead of wide with your books at the moment. Uh I've yeah, you know, I'm just re-listening to the 10x rule at the moment and sold or be sold. And they're absolutely awesome. And here's the thing, like I want to know. Yeah, you've written this is what your seventh book is it and i just want to know is it how do, how do you keep coming up with new stuff like is it is it just other books regurgitated or is it something new that you know everyone out there who's looking to check it out is going to get some value out of because i see some people and like yeah they write a lot of books and uh yeah, there's not a lot of points of difference, but so far with all the books that i've listened to and read of yours uh they've just been so massively different and I've taken so many different takeaways from them that it's been yeah a pretty amazing um, I think it's an amazing ability so kudos to you and and yeah I'd just love to find out I guess the the mindset behind that so thank you very much and I, look I've written seven books I remember hearing a guy that I used to read his books and somebody said yeah he wrote 27 books but 26 of them are the same thing you know and I'm like and I, I don't know if that I, I didn't I didn't see it like that frankly but but that's what this guy said and, and I thought to myself Dude, nobody's ever going to say that about my books, okay? 
And, and, and I've been, I've had a number of people tell me, you know what, your books are different. Okay. And, and sooner or later, I'm going to run out of stuff to write about because I will only write about what I know about and what I'm trying to figure out. And this book obsessed, be obsessed or be average is really the thing that I figured out how to do more than sales, more than marketing, more than promotion, more than closing deals, negotiating real estate, all that stuff. Dude, I, I, I figured out how to tap into this. I don't know, this nuclear plant that I have. Right. That pulsates that 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 the this fusion thing that's going on inside of me that I think is going on inside of everybody, by the way. And and I remember it really it really woke up. And when you start like when you start playing in a space and start thinking about something, you start seeing everything, you know, like you go by a red Volkswagen and the next thing you see, you see red Volkswagens everywhere. Right. You know, that phenomenon. Well, Gary V was here one day and Gary said something about the entrepreneur. You're either born to be one or you're not. It's a genetic thing. And at that time, I was working on Obsessed, and Obsessed really is about tapping into something very spiritual that's not genetic, not physical. It, 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 you, you can't take it out of your blood, out of your arms. And I thought to myself, dude, there's no way, there's no way that's true. Okay? There's no way an entrepreneur is born to be an entrepreneur. They're just – it's impossible because my mom, my mom was a little Italian lady, man. She never even held a job. So where's the genetic? Where's the DNA here? OK. And by the way, all ideas, ideas do not come out of the body. You know, if I have an idea right now about a pink elephant, well, that, that's not in my freaking DNA. I'm looking I'm looking for pink elephants. There, there isn't one in my body right now. So that means that idea came out of here somewhere out of my mind. Right. Way outside my brain. I'm not talking about my head. So the tap into man, tap into this spiritual thing. Why, why do people get addicted to drugs or to a person? Or an idea. Why, why is the entrepreneur waking up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning? Oh, my God, I got this idea. Why can't you go away from it, right? It could be a really positive obsession or a negative one, but it tells you there's energy. There's this nuclear, this fusion, this power, this generator going on. you got to turn it on. you got to freaking feed it energy and juice. And I'm telling you, if you can find that obsession, you can be great at anything. The obsession is what will carry, see you through to the finish line and beyond. First off, what can people expect when they get this book? Because I know I've pre-ordered mine. I'm super excited. As I said, I've read all your other books. But you know, for those who haven't, what can they expect in this book? And then secondly, obviously the titles Be Obsessed or Be Average. How do people go from living in mediocrity and you know, just ticking away with the societal norms to bang, that all of a sudden living and on a whole different frequency and just completely obsessed. Dude, you, you, got, you got to give yourself permission to be a freaking junkie. You got to b- give yourself permission to be an addict. You got to give yourself a permission to be a fanatic. You know, you got to give yourself permission to be a neurotic. You got to give yourself permission to be a control freak. And, and if you like things clean, well, good, man. If you don't like germs, awesome, bro. I don't like them either. Okay. You, you got to figure out, you got to take that freaking juice, man. Whatever it is, you're an introvert. You got to freaking grab the introvert that's got all this energy tied up and pinning you down. It's pinning you down to be this little tiny person. And you got to tap into that freaking juice that's got you pinned down and pin the world down. So I would just tell yourself, number one, this book is going to give people permission. People that have been labeled ADD, ADHD, COPD, whatever you've been labeled, dude, crazy. Look, I was, I was prescribed drugs, uh, terrible drugs, lithium, uh, Ritalin, uh, unbelievable. I mean, these drugs are so powerful. They make freaking, they make cocaine and marijuana look like Advil. And um, I didn't have a problem, bro. You know what the, the problem I had? The people that were evaluating me were average. The people that were evaluating me were people that were trying to fit in, man. I ain't trying to fit in, dude. I've already told everybody I want to be rich. Okay, I want to fly private. I do not want to sit with a bunch of other people I don't know. In fact, I don't even want all the seats in my plane field, man. Okay, I want a freaking exotic life. I want to go places and spend money and not worry about it. Now, now, if that makes me sound elitist or greedy or selfish, well, then, dude, go ahead and throw that shit at me. You ain't going with me. If you're talking about that, talking because everybody that goes on these trips with me, they're like, dude, this is awesome, man. We need to do this more often. I'm like, well, dude, if we're going to do this more often, we need some money. okay? And if we want money, 
We need to go out and let people know who we are, okay? And if we're going to let people know who we are and get money, we need great products that help people. So it's all tied in. Look, as long as you got a good purpose, okay, and you're not an evil person, which most people who listen to this are not evil, man, you need to tap in. I'm giving people permission. Tap in. Tap into that addictive part of you. Light it up. And the hardest part is not lighting it once. It's keeping it lit. And for everyone out there listening who is in their job or is just starting out, you need to get obsessed. There's so many resources out there that you can jump into. There's this podcast, for example. There's books. There's everything galore that you can turn up the frequency and you can all of a sudden be obsessed with what you're doing, which I think is absolutely important. Yeah, and Victor, Victor, that's why what you're doing, dude, is so important. I mean, I really, really just want to admire, I, I admire and acknowledge how valuable it is what you do. Got guys that do like what you do, I think a lot of people don't take the time to thank you for investing your time and energy in, in, in sharing something positive with people. Thanks so much. That means a lot coming from you, particularly someone that I do look up to and follow. If people, I know your time is super valuable and I appreciate all the value that you've already put out to us. So if people want to find out more about you and get hold of this book, where can they go and what can they do? Be obsessed or be average. This is, this is what I'll do, Victor. This is what I'll do for all my friends in Australia. By the way, I'm coming there in May. I think I'm coming there in May of next year. I'm going to be there for about two weeks. Um, so me and you will definitely hook up, probably have a cigar and you can show me the beach. Uh, um, but but if you get, if anybody that pre-orders, be obsessed or be average. You can get it from Amazon, Target. I think you guys have Target over there. Barnes and Noble, Books a Million. Pre-order the book, okay. And what I'm going to do for everybody that pre-orders in Australia, particularly my friends in the Gold Coast there, is I am going to include a 13-week mastermind. We'll stream this to you. Um, it'll be live with me where I become your personal coach for 13 weeks and we'll walk through each chapter of the book. So this is not going to be a book you don't finish because you're going to finish it with me. The author is going to read it with you. Well, Grant, I'd just like to say thank you so much for being on the show. And I'd just like to welcome you to our Youngpreneurs family, Uncle G. It has been awesome. I look forward to reading your book and can't wait to catch up when you're here in the Gold Coast next year. Dude, I love the Australian people, man. They've always been great to me. Thank you so much, Victor. Thanks for listening to the Youngpreneurs podcast. This was proudly brought to you by the Podcast Institute, the number one training resource to take your business from chasing leads to leads chasing you and from an absolute amateur to a full blown authority. If you are looking to take your business to the next level, then a podcast is the obvious answer. You can get national and global exposure in a very fast time and it's just exactly what I've done with this podcast. So if you want to find out more, get a checklist on how you can get started for under $60 and to find out more through a small training video that I've prepared for you all, then please check out PassiveIncomeYoung.com forward slash podcast training.